Hey guys, I'm going to put this video on our how to do stuff in Japan playlist because it's sort of about cars but it's more than that. It's more of a general thing that you might encounter if you spend time in Japan. So the first topic or the example is Japanese Sharken, which is sort of like uh, in England, I think they call it MOT. In Australia, they call it Roadworthy Certificate. It's just that thing that you've got to get where you get your car checked. You get your car checked and, and, and uh, um, uh, approved as being safe or as um, acknowledged as being safe. And also the tax, the road tax thing, the registration thing. So it's combined in Japan, it's called Sharken. Sharken, which means you give your car to the, the car shop um, every two years and they check it to make sure it's all safe, uh, make sure your tires are right and make sure that all your lights work and that it's not leaking oil and that look, they're a bit strict about the bodywork. All the cars in Japan you'll notice as they drive past we don't get beaten up looking cars around here. They're very strict about the exterior and the interior. You can't have holes in your seats, they have to be patched and there's all sorts of funny rules. Very strict. Um, and you pay your money, which is well, average is probably about a thousand dollars for two years, uh, providing there's no major repairs required, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, and off you go. So um, it's a bit of a thing because, and it's notorious because Japanese people on the average Japanese person isn't really terribly mechanically minded and the car places, we won't say they're dishonest, it's more that the standard here is a certain standard. So I'll give you a few examples. So what if you if you have to take your car for sharking in Japan, it's a pretty good idea to have a look at it yourself first. Even if you're not terribly mechanically minded, you know, you're supposed to have like 1.6 mil of tread across the tire, all the way across the tire. So if one side of the tire is worn down smooth or less than 1.6 mil, they're probably going to uh, say it needs to be replaced. So check your tires, or if you want to take them to a tire shop and ask them. But again, you've got to be careful because what they tend to do here, anything that's old or worn, they want to replace it with a new one. Right? And we'll expand on that more shortly. But if, if you've got a bit of an idea that you need 1.6 mil at least across the tire, you're going to have a bit of an idea if you look at the tire whether or not they're going to say you need a new one or two or three or four. Um, and then if you do, get a price on it from another tire shop. Right? And likewise with anything else that you think is going to be a problem, get a price on it before you go. Because what they'll do is you put it in for Shark End. And it's usually a big production, you know, a big deal. They sit down, a lot, of the, a lot of the mechanical shops here, they actually have like little, uh, what do you call it, reception areas with tables and chairs. And usually there's a dude that talks to you, or, or a lady, but a person who talks to you who's wearing, wearing a tie and it's all very formal and they sit down with you. And it's a real thing. It's a real, anything you get done on your car is often like that. It's a real big event or a big sort of, uh, faffing thing you know and they sit down there's a lot of standing around standing around people that are supported by these car shops right which might explain why they're so expensive and they'll sit down big explanation there's always big sets in there for everything um, and you leave your car there and then usually you get a phone call and they say okay you need two tires and you need this you need this and you need this right and they charge an arm and a leg I mean not always but mostly you know, if you talk to people who live here, usually the Japanese people don't notice so much because they just accept it. They just accept it, they don't question it, they just accept it, right? And, and oh, okay, you know, okay, we'll do that. And so the car, uh, the car places charge a fortune for these things and the people just pay it, usually. So we had a few examples. Um, we, we actually just put a car in for Shark and ourselves and that's exactly what we did. We went to the, the front, two front tires look like they're gonna need replacing. So we actually went to the, the tire place and got a price and asked the Shark End place, look, if, if we need two tires, what are you gonna charge for that? And so they said Neiman, which is about 200 bucks. And the tire place said 250, which is good. So, okay, it's good. We know if they've got to replace two tires for the Shark End, which they probably will, um, we gotta pay that, right? Um, but on, a, on an unrelated thing, um, before the Shark End, um, the windscreen wiper on the, on the other car, not this one, um, on the other car stopped working, right? And so 
the unskilled mechanic is not much of a mechanic, but the unskilled mechanic had a look at the fuse, fuses, right? Checked all the fuses, the fuses were okay. And then, then I turned off all the, all the noisy things in the car, turned off the aircon fan and all the noisy things so it was quiet. Turn on the ignition and turn on the wiper. And I could hear the wiper going boo, to hear the little motor going boo. So then I went to the internet and searched that make of car and windscreen wiper broken. And there was a guy on there with a YouTube video showing that that particular car with that problem and he pulled it all apart, right? And here it is, it's this arm between the wiper and the motor that, that fails on this car fairly, fairly commonly apparently. So, ah, oh, okay, that must be the problem. So anyway, put the car in, okay, the wiper's broken, please fix it. So the next day, I mean, they faff around, you know, so the next day I get a phone call from this dude and it's the dude with the tie behind the counter calling up, right? Oh, we're going to check the fuse. We think it might be the fuse. If it is, it's going to be Ichiman, right? That's a hundred bucks for a 50 cent fuse. Um, or if it's not, it might be the, the motor. And if it's the motor, it's uh, Yonman, which is 400 bucks, right? So it was like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. And it was my wife who was talking to him and I could hear, hear all this. And I said, ah, oh, let me talk to him, let me talk to him. So I got on the phone, I said, oh, look, I'm terribly sorry. My Japanese is still really bad, I'm really sorry. Um, but um, it's not the fuse. I already checked the fuse. It's not the fuse. And if you get in the car and you turn on the ignition and you, you turn on the wiper, you'll hear the motor working. It's not the motor. Um, what it is is an arm between the motor and the wiper that's broken, right? And and so, oh, <laughs> right. So this is what they do. You know, this is itchy man. That's that's a hundred bucks for a fifty cent fuse. Is what they're going to charge if it was the fuse. You know, and this is this is exactly what they do. You know, some of you might remember a couple of years ago, um, the car had a starter problem and it was uh, some little electronic component. And so they replaced that, but they also replaced the battery. And there was nothing wrong with the battery. When we were trying to start the car, it was really, really full of beans. You know, when you turn the, the, the ignition, and when you turn the starter, it was really healthy, right? So knew it wasn't the starter motor and knew it wasn't the, the battery because they were both really healthy. And, and yet, when they, after they replaced this electronic part, they replaced the battery. And when I said to them, why did you replace the battery? Oh, it was old, right? And usually for Japanese people, that's enough. If, if someone tells them the, the, the specialist, and this is the other thing, they've got this thing about specialists that they're sensei, right? And that if sensei says, the guy with the tie behind the counter, who's probably not a mechanic, if he says, you've got to replace this thing, they go, oh, thank you very much. Right? They don't question it. They just don't question it. So if you told a Japanese person it was a hundred bucks for a fuse, they just, oh, thank you very much. Right? They wouldn't question it. Most of them. Most of them. There's some, ex some exceptions to this, of course. But most of them don't question it. You know? And we've, we've had it before. So we had it with the wiper fuse. We had it with the tire. Um, what we do, by the way, and this, this would be a bit of advice for anybody who's going through any of these repair things in Japan, is we ask them to put anything that they replace we ask them to put it in the back of the car, which some people from some call, countries call the boot of the car. Some of our American friends call it the trunk. So we basically tell them, please, and I, I, I've been doing this for years, and I just told them that it, in, in, in Australia, we like to know, you know what's happening with our vehicles and we like to see for ourselves. And I know it's very strange, but if you wouldn't mind, could you please put any parts that you replace, put the old part, in the back of the car so that I can see see it later. And it just have, you have to be careful, of course. You can't say it's because I don't trust you, you thieves, right? Um, but th they had no problem with that. And in fact, what they do is they usually wrap it up in some plastic and neatly put it in the boot of the car, right? And they probably think it's weird, but I don't care because what that means is they know if they replace something that's not damaged or that, that isn't a problem, they know I'm going to be looking at it. You know, and hopefully that helps keep them a little bit, a little bit, um, they might think I'm strange, but it might help them be a bit more careful about what they replace. Because they've got this classic thing here. Some of you might remember over the years, what else have we had? We had, um, oh, the fax machine. That was another one. We had a fax machine that was, uh, might have been 18 months old or something like that. And, and it just wouldn't feed the paper. You put paper in and it'd go brrr, and it was trying to get suck the paper in, you know, like they do, but it wouldn't take the paper in. Yeah, I know, fax machines are weird. 
So those of you who have missed it, we made a video about this years ago. Fax machines are hugely popular in Japan. Almost everybody has one in their house. You know, really, really common, um, and businesses still use them. Really, really common in Japan. People will say, can you fax it to me? Really, really common. So this fax was about 18 months old, and it just wasn't feeding paper. So I took it back to the place we bought it from, and they went, ah, oh, mmm, mmm, yeah, mm. They suck through their teeth and tilt their head, and oh, it's a big problem, it's a big problem. And the guy behind the counter, it, the guy with the tie behind the counter, sucked through his teeth, went out the back, talked to someone else, came back again, sucked through his teeth, and said, it would cost more to repair it than it would be to buy a new one. You're better off buying a new one. And most Japanese people go, oh, thank you very much. Can you throw this away for me? And they'd buy a new one from the shop while they were there, and off they'd go again, right? And that, that old fax machine, that 18 months old fax machine, would be thrown away, off for recycling somewhere, probably. Um, so that's, that's, that's exactly what they said, they, you know, you need to replace it. So I went home and opened it up, because I always figure if someone tells me something can't be fixed, you might as well pull it apart, right, have a look at it. So the unskilled fax repairer um, pulled it apart, and had a look and there was a little roller that was supposed to take the paper in and it was really smooth and I thought yeah that's that how's that going to take the paper in it's too smooth it's going to slip so I got a little file and filed it made it rough and then started it up and fed the paper in off it went and 18 uh, that was a year or two ago and it's still working working well so you know that's really common um, just one more quick one the unskilled air conditioner repair guy we had an air con that was about probably 15 years old and you can't even ask them to fix something like that they'll just how old is it 15 years oh no we can't fix that you have to get a new one it's automatic right you know that's what they're going to say um, and so this thing kept beeping beep 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 so I searched online okay it's this model of aircon it's beeping three times and it kept doing it every five minutes or something it's driving us nuts and what's it mean oh it means there's some under voltage in the compressor or some nonsense like that um, and so, oh geez, and so you can't get anyone to come fix it. And if you, and, and even if you do with the fax or the or the uh, aircon or the car or any of those things, it, you can't buy the parts usually. They they they'll tell you that you can't get the parts for it. Oh, I need a part for this. You can't get it, right? And so that often happens too, where you can't get the part. So sometimes it can work out like with the fax machine, manage to fix it without a part. But if you need a part, you're pretty well screwed usually because they don't sell parts for things. That these guys don't repair stuff. The, the guy that comes to your house about your aircon, he they don't repair anything. They install stuff. The aircon guy's an air conditioner installer. He's not an air conditioner repairer. He's an air conditioner installer. He installs new aircons. So if your old aircon isn't working, he'll tell you you need a new one. That's basically what they do, right? And Japanese people like that because here telling them something's old, that's the end of it. That's the end of it. You know, it's old, you need a new one, you know. And I hear it from family members and friends all the time in Japan. Oh, it's old, you need a new one, you know. And that was the general consensus on this aircon, right? So once I found out it's an under voltage on the compressor, all right, okay. So don't know how to fix that, can't get parts for it anyway, okay. So I opened up the, opened up the air conditioner. And some of you guys will know what, what I'd call a son alert. I don't know what they're really called, but it's a little, it's a little cylinder, right? A little cylinder that's smaller than a, like a one yen coin. And it's the actual thing that beeps. It's like a speaker. It's like a little speaker, it beep beep. So when you hear beep beep come from an air conditioner or something similar, it's this little cylindrical thing that actually makes the noise, right? Beep beep. So, I opened up this, the air conditioner, had a look at that thing, right, okay, went and got a screwdriver and popped this thing off, right, just popped it off, boom, so it was gone, okay, no more beep beep from you, like taking the speaker off something so it can't make noise anymore, right, so the, the machine is still unhappy and it's still reporting this under voltage thing, but it can't make any noise, which, and the noise was what was bothering us, so it stopped making noise, that would have been probably three years ago, since then, that aircon runs. It runs pretty well 24 hours a day in summer, um, pretty well 24 hours a day in winter. It, it sort of runs most of the year. You know, a few perfect days of the year, it doesn't get turned on. 
but winter and summer it works its ass off. No problems at all for three years, right? And yet, if that was the normal Japanese household, that thing would have been thrown in the garbage three years ago, and they would have had another one in there. And it's the same, it's the same with the cars and the air cons and the fax machines and all their equipment, devices, refrigerators, everything, you know? More than, more than a couple of years old, they throw it away. Some of you would have seen videos we've done with the houses. The, the banks value new houses on a sliding scale from when it's brand new. You know, when it's brand new, it might be worth $300,000, right? The house itself, not the land, might be worth $300,000. And then it's a sliding scale over 20 years to zero. And then it actually becomes a negative value because their thinking is that a 20 year old house just needs to be demolished and it might cost $20,000 to demolish it. So when they value that 20 year old house, they'll say, okay, the land's worth $200,000. It'll cost 20,000 to demolish the old house. Um, so that's a $180,000 value. So it becomes a negative value. And, and that's the way they value things, it, 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 you know? Every day old that it is, it loses its value, no matter what it is, pretty much. So anyway, that's the heads up. If you come, <laughs> if you come to Japan, um, hopefully something out of that will be of use to you if you're gonna spend some time in Japan or if you're already here. Hopefully there'll be some little point in there that might be of some help, so. Anyway, we'll watch this train go past from left to right, and then that'll be the end of that video. <laughs> More videos. Coming soon!